Hello everybody and welcome back to a new episode. Today I have the Vauxhall Insignia or Opel Insignia, the second generation which came out in 2017 when it replaced the previous one. An affordable sedan that actually looks good, is very economical, you have plenty of space and it has plenty of features. So you can understand why I found that car appealing. I drove the old Insignia and I thought it was, well, I thought it was a good car until this came out. This one replaced it in 2017 and well, it got much better, of course. You get a new interior, you get new engines and you get a lot of features on it as well. But Honestly, I would have wanted to review the estate version of this one because uh, I find it even better looking than the sedan. I don't know why. And Well, this is not literally a sedan. This is, well, kind of a uh, hatchback limousine because the trunk doesn't pop like an ordinary trunk. So actually, this is kind of a more like a, of a hatchback. But let's get back to the car, stop blabbing about uh, nonsense and things and uh, talk about actual things. For example, this car has a 2 liter diesel engine which produces 170 horsepower, actually 168, 400 newton meters, which uh, you can feel that, and also goes from 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds, which isn't bad considering that this is a heavy car and has a fuel consumption between 55 miles and 60 miles per gallon outside town. But what's interesting about it is that this car actually has a front wheel drive, but you can get it with a all wheel drive. You also can have this one with a lots of engines. For example, you have the smallest 1.5 petrol all the way up to a V6 3.6 liters. You can have a couple of diesels starting from a 1.5 and all the way up to a two liter version as this one is. Now, this being the SRI means that it's more better looking it's more sportier and it behaves more sportier than the standard one and it looks much better you have huge wheels on the side which they look quite cool i have to tell you that the wheels on this car actually look beautiful but also not just the wheels the whole car is beautiful starting with the front end being such an aggressive car you have the front end pointed towards the ground to give the car a very cool aerodynamic sense the headlights look cool you have led daytime running lights but on this one you don't have xenon or led you just have simple lights that's it in the front bumper you can notice the fog lights which have been surrounded with this chrome finish and gives the car an elegant stance as well. So you have an aggressive front end but also with some stylish elements to make it a little bit more elegant. The bonnet looks cool, it has beautiful draw lines that emphasizes again the sportiness of this car. From the side you can see the slick lines of the car and I do like it, honestly it looks a lot better than the first generation and it's competing head to head with the Ford Mondeo and Renault Laguna but this one actually looks a little bit more stylish than the Ford Mondeo I don't know why probably appeals to me more than the Ford now that doesn't mean that is a bad car but this one uh, I don't know for me this one uh, seems much much better the 20 inch alloy wheels actually gives this car a very cool look from the side and well makes it sportier elegant and makes it well much more aggressive as well on the rear end you have sleek tail lights the rear bumper is aggressive also at the rear end you have a rear view camera which is shown in the infotainment system also you have the parking sensors and not there yet you have a roof spoiler to remind you that you're not driving a plane normal hatchback sedan no you drive the sri version of voxel and you have to be reminded of that as well you have the voxel badge and on the right side you have the turbo d which shows you that this car is a turbo well i don't know why uh, voxel and uh, or opel put this label on the cars because definitely well it's kind of the elephant on, in the room, but still they put that on the rear end of the car. 
Regarding the whole design of the car, it's very futuristic, very modern. I do like how it looks. I do like how it stands out because it stands out. The older Insignia version was a little bit plainer and duller, but this one actually is very aggressive and uh, going against the competition against the Mazda 6, the Ford Mondeo. This actually looks quite, quite cool. Regarding the interior, well, kudos here. The interior is beautifully designed. You have leather on the door side. You have partial leather on the seats. The seats are very comfortable. In this version of the car, you don't get heated seats. This one is very weird because it has an electric adjustment which lifts only the front of the seat and uh, well if you want to lift the seat you have a latch over here and you, you do like this which I don't know why so the seat you guessed it it's not electrically adjustable it's manual adjustable but you do have good lumbar support and this is good on the door side you have leather you have this beautiful aluminium trim right here aluminium on the doors as well on the door handler aluminium right over here and this looks like carbon fiber it's not carbon fiber but it does look like carbon fiber which is interesting regarding the dashboard i do like the fact that they placed a weird stitching here the dashboard isn't covered in leather but it has some stitching over here which gives you the impression that it's covered in leather which is not it's odd but well it is what it is the whole lines of the car seems like they hug you. This is this is the perfect thing to say. Actually, the whole car is directed towards you. You have this continuous line that makes you one with the car. And this is a beautiful thing that uh, Vauxhall came up with. I know that in the Audis you have this, uh, but uh, also in the Jaguars. But this one, it's much, much better than I expected which is odd because usually I have high expectations and uh, I get disappointed quite easily. But with this one, I said, okay, it's a Vauxhall. I know that they make good cars. So how interesting could that be? They make normal cars for normal people who don't are petrol heads and uh, they don't expect the car to be wild and I don't know, quirky and interesting. But still, this is actually a very interesting car. Regarding the whole elements of the car has high quality materials and uh, the sound isolation isn't that bad. It's not perfect like the German sedan would have, but they actually isolated this car very well from the exterior, which this is something that I like. Sound system, brilliant. It sounds brilliant. And you have plenty of room, decent room here, decent room here and uh, decent room in all the car it's very spacious and i do like that um, the interesting part of this being an sri has some cool features like you have aluminium paddles over there and also you have sri badges around the car which i do think it's kind of neat and of course you have the sport steering wheel Regarding the steering wheel, I have to mention that you have this sport steering wheel with two types of leather, perforated and plain leather. You have an aluminium trim over here and a flat bottom, which gives the car a very sporty sense. And of course, being the SRI version, it is the sporty version of this car. The steering wheel feels great in your hands. It's bolstered right over here and it makes the ride very very pleasant also you have collision warning you have heated steering wheel which i know that this is interesting and also you have cruise control so this car has decent amount of options on it now let's discuss a bit about the gauge cluster which i like how it looks even though it has a small screen in the middle it's not huge screens and things like that but still it looks cool in the screen we can see the range we can see the oil life and also tire pressure you have well you have a timer to see how fast you can go from 0 to 60. you have traffic sign recognition follow distance which this measured the distance in seconds from the vehicle in front of you which is quite cool you have air conditioning distance miles and echo driving you see this car actually does 41.8 miles per gallon you have a digital speedo
and well that's kind of it so overall the gauge cluster looks very cool it's modern even though it's not digital i have to tell you that it works for me i do like how this gauge cluster looks this is the infotainment system of the Insignia SRI. And I have to tell you that it's quite interesting. You have a touch screen over here, which is very responsive and uh, it behaves quite, quite very intuitive. You have a very good sound system. And uh, I do have to mention the sound system because, well, you know that I like to have a good sound system in my car and I encourage you to do the same. So this car has Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and uh, DAB radio, also Bluetooth media. You have projection over here, which, well, you can connect it to the USB. Let's go a bit into the settings. So you have time, date, language, valet mode, and uh, Bluetooth, and yeah, as you can see, Wi-Fi as well. Uh, okay, let's go a bit into the valet mode. So you have a code, well, kudos for that. Uh, these are the settings which, well, I have to tell you that I'm a little bit disappointed. I actually expected to be a little bit more entertaining, but it actually isn't. This is the DAB radio. This is the phone feature. Also, you have the sat-nav, which is colored. I'm making a joke here. I like the colors. It's very vivid and I do like how it looks. It's very intuitive. The infotainment system behaves like a smartphone. So this is something cool. Now let's go into the climate controls. From here you can adjust the climate controls, but also they have physical buttons as well, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, here we have the messages from the phone, which is not connected and uh, what do we have more we have traffic but uh is not available right now so the infotainment system of this car is very simple very easy to use very intuitive the screen is very colored very vivid and i do like how it looks so from here we adjust the rear view camera which this car has we have the bluetooth language and well this are the settings of this car which they're not bad but still i actually expected a little bit more down here we have the climate controls from here you can adjust the temperature and you have a screen over here and from here you can adjust the fan speed and well the climate settings you have windscreen defroster and rear defroster but also you can adjust these from the screen over here and it's quite helpful that you can actually adjust the climate controls from the screen and from the physical buttons as well. I kind of like that. Down here we have the gear shifter which looks quite cool. You have this aluminium pattern that it's surrounding the gear shifter and of course right here you have aluminium as well. Here you have leather and it's stitched in white which gives the car a very elegant feel. Right here we have the parking brake which is electronical. Right here we have some storage compartment which you can put some stuff in here. Right here we have a couple of blank buttons, the lane assist and the automatic stop start. These are annoying here but nevertheless they are here. If we open this latch we have the cup holders which they are decent sized. You have one for the driver, one for the passenger side which well should be two and uh, when you want them to go away you have this beautiful piano black finish over here which looks quite cool right jumping into the rear seats of this car well surprise surprise here you have a lot and a lot of room i mean just look how spacious this car is honestly i didn't expect that this car is so big it feels big but honestly i didn't expect it to be this spacious here you have some rear air vents for the rear passengers two cup holders here in this armrest right here you have a place to put some uh, some stuff the door pockets are not large but wow this is a big car honestly it feels very spacious i have the seat adjusted as i said and look at this how much room i have in this car you have leather on the door side as well here this fake carbon fiber as well and uh, you do have to tell you that here is quite a pleasant place to be if you would have had for example um, dual climate controls for you here or a panoramic sunroof this would have been a perfect place to sit in 
I got this car from my friends at Carzet. Carzet are a specialized secondhand car dealership located in Ipswich. All the cars come with six months REC warranty, which is extendable up to three years. If you want to part exchange your car, they can help you with that. If you have a low credit score and you need finance, Carzet are your guys. And if you want your car to be delivered all the way across UK, Carzet will do that for you. Also, they were awarded by Auto Trader for their excellent customer service. So check them out at carzet.co.uk. It's time to drive the insignia uh, Vauxhall. Well, Opel, Vauxhall, blah, blah, blah. But first I want to show you the key. This is the key of the car, which is quite interesting. I do have to tell you that it's been modernized. This car has start stop button, which is right over here. And you don't need the key. And I'm gonna place the key right here in this compartment. Looks like that was was made especially for that key. So manual, we're gonna put the ignition on. So you have to press the clutch to start the car. Yes. Okie dokie. It's time to go. Seatbelt on. Yes. Okie dokie. Uh, seat adjustment. Okay, it's kind of weird having just the front of the seat lifted or uh, make it go down, but it is what it is. We're gonna go now. Okay, uh, okay, let's exit from this settings over here. Let's go back into the info because I don't like Imperial uh, staring at me. And yes, put the car in first, deactivate the parking brake. And let's head off. I drove this car earlier today and uh, I actually did find it quite good. Yes, surprisingly good because uh, this is not a high-end sedan. It's, well, a budget sedan. It's budget friendly. You have two liter diesel engine. You have a lot of gadgets, including heated steering wheel, included uh, cruise control, including lane assist and uh, traffic sign recognition and the distance between you and uh, the car in front of you, uh, warning collision, which is, well, it's cool. Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay, cool sound system, uh, leather seats, and comfortable seats, even though these are not the most comfortable seats I ever sat in, they are comfortable enough. Uh, unfortunately, they are not heated, and this is kind of a shame because they could have actually placed that, but still. Regarding the 20 inch wheels, I do have to admit they look darn cool on this car, but the ride is harsh. Uh, not very harsh, but still harsh. Doesn't compare to uh, 18 inch wheels on this car. The suspension is firm, the steering is precise, but the ride is a little bit harsh thanks to the 20 inch wheels. Because, well, you don't have uh, adaptive dampers on this car, you don't have sport mode or comfort mode on things like that. This is very basic in that area, but it is pleasant to drive. It is spacious and, well, you've seen how much room you have in this car. Even like this, I have the seated adjusted perfectly exactly as I said, and behind me, you still have a lot of room, so it's like, if I'm looking back there, it's way back there. Uh, yeah, insanely spacious. I didn't expect this car to be this big. Honestly, it's bigger than my Audi A8, which <laughs> I thought that is a spacious car, but this one, oh, it's, it amazed me how spacious it is. Uh, one thing that I wanna mention is the road noise. I don't literally think that the road noise is just because of the 20 inch wheels of course they do help a little bit with that but the car isn't isolated as uh, the luxury sedans it is not uh, it does feel a little bit uh, annoying in that area because you do feel some noise from the outside which is a shame because all the other things in this car feel premium if you know what I'm saying. So a lot of things feel premium expect from the fact that you get some noises from the outside. Uh, they could have isolated the car a little bit better. Regarding how you feel when you're driving this car, actually it doesn't feel 
that big. It is big, but it doesn't feel that. It's very nimble, it's fun to drive. This two liter diesel engine has enough torque, enough power, and being a manual, this means that it, yeah, it means that you can have fun with it. Uh, would I want it the normatic one? Probably yes, because I'm lazy. But if you want to have a good driving experience, then you should get a manual if you like that. If you are lazy like me, then just grab an automatic because you have plenty to choose from. You have six speed, eight speed automatic, and a nine speed automatic. So you only have one manual, which is this one, the six speed. Nevertheless, every other elements of the car I do like and uh, I do find it quite interesting. So overall, would I buy one? Well, actually, I'm in the market looking for a new car, for a new daily car. And uh, this starting to make a lot of sense because I do need a very spacious car and you have a lot of space in this car. You have a huge boot and also for the rear passengers, <laughs> there's plenty of space for everything. So, yes, I would, I would consider buying one of these probably with an automatic gearbox because well I told you before I'm lazy but still yeah that was it for today guys hope you enjoyed it press a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't done this already and I'll see you in the next episode meantime peace some blessings and uh, well have a wonderful day I shall see you later